Welcome back, welcome back. Realism Sports Talk, episode 29. Woo, March Madness is here, baby. March Madness is here. You know I had to rock my Big East champion Hoya hat just for this day. You know what I'm saying? But uh, hey, first of all, I'm going to start off. Rick Hess, I apologize. VMI over number 10, Furman. And now y'all 2-0. Oh, y'all just beat another team. 2-0. Oh. VMI football is back. It's crazy. And my boy, Austin White, the DB from Harrisonburg, Virginia, is out here doing things. Go ahead, Austin. Keep going. I hope y'all play JMU in the playoffs and smack their butts. You know what I mean? But before we get to NCAA talk, I know it's on everybody's mind. We're going to talk about some football stuff. And the biggest news in football, Drew Brees retired. How we feel about Drew Brees? I mean, I know, in my opinion, Drew Brees is one of those guys that's always had to prove himself. You know, he was a Purdue Boilermaker. I ain't really messed with him. I'm a Notre Dame fan. So, you know, us in the Big Ten don't play with each other. So, that's the way it is. Look, the dogs are barking. Dogs are barking. That's because the NCAA tournament's about to start. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah. So, Drew Brees. We'll be talking about with Drew Brees. He is what he is. I think he's been the model citizen. I think he's done so much for the culture of New Orleans. Um, Hurricane Katrina. I mean, that whole situation was crazy. But before all that, before all that, he was with San Diego. And he was a, he was pretty good with San Diego. He did a lot of things, you know. But then Michael Vick comes. They're about to drive Michael Vick. They say, you know what? Nah, we ain't going to do that. We're going to take Drew Brees and LaDainian Thomas. Hey, and in my opinion... I'd have traded Michael Vick. As electrifying as he was in those days, you got LaDainian Thomas and Drew Brees. That was huge. That was huge. So I'm like, okay, they showed a lot of faith in him, you know, getting rid of Michael Vick, and they're going to roll with you in LT. Maybe it was for more of LT. Maybe it wasn't. Probably was. But whatever. They both went in the Hall of Fame, uh, which means it's even worse that they never won rings together there. So then we got Phillip Rivers, who I'm a big Phillip Rivers fan. Don't get me wrong. But then they like, all right, Drew Brees, you're out. We got Phillip Rivers, who hasn't won anything. And I love Phillip Rivers. And he's retired and he's done. He's a first, first, sure first Hall of Famer. Don't play games. But for Drew Brees, look at the, look at look what happened. Nick Saban, Alabama, great head coach. Coach of the Miami Dolphins says, oh, they, Drew Brees fails a physical. He failed a physical? Really? Then they wind up getting Dante Culpepper. Drew Brees goes to the Saints. We saw what happened with Culpepper. We saw what happened with Nick Saban. And we saw what happened with Drew Brees. Now, suppose this would have happened. Could they have won in Miami? Possibly. Nick, Nick Saban is a hell of a coach. Drew Brees is a hell of a player. Could they have won? Maybe. But think about all the championships Alabama would not have. Probably not anyway. And think about what New Orleans would probably never have gotten. They probably still be one of these teams like the Detroit Lions. That never won a Super Bowl. So that's the way fate always happens. Fate, fate runs different courses for different people. But then we look at what he did in Hurricane Katrina years. I mean, that was a phenomenon. That's a storybook ending. That's that's just that's just classic stuff. And I wish that would have been the end of his career. Because the way his, the rest of his career went, he put up numbers, got all these records. But who are we to, who are we to argue that the past... Four years, maybe. At least three out of those four years. They should have went to the Super Bowl and possibly had a chance to win. Their teams went in the playoffs deep. Some fluky things happened. The fluky thing with uh, the Minnesota Vikings, miracle in, in Minnesota. You know what I mean? And then we had the fake pass interference crap with against the Rams, who the Rams didn't even show up to the Super Bowl. I mean, that's just two right there. I mean, I'm just saying, like, it's crazy. Didn't you sweep Tampa Bay in the regular season this past year? And then, and then Tom Brady just does Tom Brady things. You know what I'm saying? And I picked that to happen. So, Drew Brees, I mean, phenomenal career. He's a Hall of Famer, surefire, first, first time Hall of Famer. But what could have been? But the, the more we talk about what could have been, what couldn't have been if things would have happened with that physical. You know what I mean? So, it is what it is. Um... But the Saints, now it looks like they're going to stick with the quarterbacks they got, Taysom Hill and Jameis Winston. Jameis Winston signed his one-year deal. Another one-year deal, Jameis? Dang, I'm, I'm surprised he 
been his time to do that. He bet on himself, though. Hey, bet on yourself. Why not? Taysom Hill restructures his deal to stay there. Um, at least they got two quarterbacks that I'd roll with because my Washington team, like I always call them, the Washington retreads, Ryan Fitzpatrick. Really? Ryan Fitzpatrick? <sighs> it could be worse, though, because Chicago got Andy Dalton. I kept Mitchell Trubisky, who just signed with the Buffalo Bills to be a backup. I'd much have much rather have Mitchell Trubisky be my starter than Andy Dalton. I mean, good lord. And then Carolina, they still dangling. I feel Teddy Bridgewater. You can't get a break, baby. You can't get a break. You come through this catastrophic injury with Minnesota, and now you with this team. You think they love you and all this, and they're like, "Hold Sean Watson, hold Sean Watson, huh? Yeah, we can get rid of you, Bridgewater." <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But then again, Deshaun Watson, we don't know. I mean, we got massage therapists and all this coming on, talking about he doing that, he doing that. What do you have, a massage massage room with uh, Robert Kraft from the Patriots? They doing some things in the massage parlors. I don't know what's going on in the massage parlors, but uh, they doing some things. <laughs> so I don't know what's going on with that. It could be just a money grab by these people on Deshaun Watson, whatever. Is that going to make people not want to trade for him? Nope, because he is still a stud. He's probably top five to seven quarterbacks in the league, hands down. And with his age, it probably puts him up to that top five level just because of his age and what he can do, you know, throwing it or mobility. I mean, that's just what it is. Um, So I think all this is going to get washed up. They might have to throw a little money at these little money-hungry women. Now, if he really did these to this woman, that sucks. And I feel bad for them, but why they waiting years? For this to happen. Why y'all waiting for him to sign this gigantic deal first? That's my, always been my problem about things like that. If it happened, yo, spill it out right now. Let's go. Let's correct the problem right now. But, I don't know. I, I guess I never had that situation as a woman. So, I guess I don't really know that much. But, NFL free agency is crazy. We're seeing people move everywhere. Malcolm Brown, Will Fuller, go to the Dolphins. We're seeing little pieces go here. Arizona Cardinals, which is my, my new NFL team. I told Dion that last year. I said, I'm going to roll with the Cardinals because I had him on fantasy, right? But shit. Kyler Murray got some weapons. Woo! I can't wait to see them. And J.J. Watt came on defense. I don't know how they lost Patrick Peterson, though. Why would Patrick Peterson go to the Vikings on a one-year deal for nothing? I'd have been like, yo, I'll take the league minimum. Let me stay and try to win a ring here with Arizona the way they build and stuff. But who am I? Who am I? But yeah, with NFL free agency is crazy, but nothing's more crazy than the New England Patriots. Who have spent more money this this free agent period than they have in 10 years, Joe? Why are they doing it now? Because Tom Brady won that ring. That's why. But if they would have spent that money before, maybe they would have kept another ring. It's ridiculous, man. They gave the Tom Brady nothing. And it took him leaving and winning with somebody that had something. That needed the quarterback to push him over the edge for them to spend money and get people. But I'll tell you what, the people that they get in the spots they get in is Clutch City. At least they're spending the money appropriately on players that are going to do well. They got two stud tight ends. Stud John New and Hunter Henry. Cam, you better come through, Cam. You know, Cam. This is your chance, Cam. So. We'll see how the Patriots are doing. I mean, I, I want them to win. I like the Patriots. They're my AFC team, whatever. But we'll see how it goes. I don't think nobody's done yet. I don't think nobody's done. I'm seeing all these teams do this and that, this and that. But I don't think nobody's done. Hopefully, we ain't done. I mean, we got Curtis Samuel, but... <sighs> <laughs> no, nah, but we got my boy, the, D, the, the DB from Cincinnati. I like that. I like that. So, I like our defense. Our defense is looking good. We'll see. But let's get to the meat and potatoes, baby. NCAA tournament starts tonight. And I'm going to tell you right now, I'm taking Texas Southern over Mount St. Mary's in the first game because I got to cheer for the SWAC because my boy goes to Alabama State, a SWAC attack, so I got to support Texas Southern. Let's go SWAC. Um, any other games, it is what it is. Um, I don't really care. A lot of people are jumping on the, the game with uh, – 
Michigan State versus UCLA? Is that more exciting than Wichita State versus Drake? Of course, more people are going to say Michigan State versus UCLA because they're big, big household names. And the winner plays BYU. So a lot of people's brackets are picking Michigan State or UCLA, who are they picked to beat BYU? See, I'm looking at it from the other side of the coin. I'm like, Wichita State and Drake, which I did see a lot of their basketball. The winner plays Kansas, who is a ginormous name in college basketball. But guess what? They had some COVID issues. They had some practice issues. Are they all going to be together? I don't know. We know what Wichita State can do in the tournament. We've seen them over the years. So I'm thinking the most exciting game between those two is going to be Wichita State and Drake because I think the winner has a chance to beat Kansas. And if they do beat Kansas, that's going to be a way bigger shocker than Michigan State or UCLA beat BYU because I think a lot of people's brackets are doing that. So that's my point on picking that one right there. Um, Am I Hoyas going to make a run? Can we make a run? We got Colorado the first game. We're picked to lose. But hey, we've been picked to lose for a while now. Shit, we could beat Colorado. We could beat Florida State next. Or we could get destroyed by Colorado. That's just the way Georgetown Hoya basketball was this year. But, hey, we Big East champions, tournament champions, and they can't take that from us. Patrick U.S. going to get some recruits in there. Hoya soccer, baby. Let's go. Um, number one seeds. Can't argue with the number one seeds. Um, easiest path, I think it has to be Gonzaga. Then they beat the top three teams in their region by destroying them. Kansas, you know, Virginia, whatever. I mean, they were destroying them. I think the biggest problem and question is, can they go undefeated? And and the reason why I say that is because if you look at the history of it, you know, Bob Knight in the, in the Indiana Hoosiers was the last team, but being undefeated is hard in football. 1972 Dolphins, I mean, whatever. The Patriots had the most dominant team. They had beat the Giants last game of the year, went to the Super Bowl and lost. The only reason why I say that, that they could lose, it's not because they can't win. They got three guys up for the uh, player of the year. And some NBA talent on that team. Gonzaga, this is the best team Gonzaga's ever had. They've been number one the whole year. And they're only, an only undefeated team. So, of course, Gonzaga is a favorite. But, will the pressure put on them? Will the pressure continue to mount on them? Being secluded. Being isolated with all this stuff going on. You know what I'm saying? Will it mount on them? It ain't done, done it yet. But, you never know how a young man feels with all this pressure going on. Other teams that play them, they ain't got nothing to lose. They're like, hey, we expected to lose. All it takes is you to be a little nervous and those threes a little short, a little off to the right, a little off to the left. And then the other team ain't got nothing to lose. We carefree. Bang it. They start falling. Start falling. Go ask Virginia how it feels when the pressure comes on with a 16 seed. So you just never know, man. You never know. Um, every year, past few years, past Bunch of years, a double-digit team's made it to the Sweet 16 or Elite 8. So then we start talking about it. Which teams can make it? One of my teams that I'm not high on is Houston. I would not be surprised if Cleveland State beat Houston in the first round. I might be dumb. I might be stupid. Or I might be like, dang, I, I don't know why I didn't think of that first. I'm just not high on Houston. I don't know why I've watched them. I just feel like, I don't know. I just feel like the they're just defensive team. But Cleveland State's one of them upstart teams. They run up and down the floor. They do all kinds of things. Um, another one, um, like we were talking about the Kansas thing with the COVID, UVA. Y'all coming off COVID. And I like UVA. They're playing Ohio. Remember last time Ohio was the 13th seed. Look what they did. UVA. Look what they, We've seen UVA from the, at the top of the mountain and at the bottom of the mountain. So would I be surprised by that? Nope. Um, Loyal Chicago, Sister Jane. Remember they went to the Final Four? But they playing that Georgia Tech team, which I didn't know nothing about Georgia Tech's team. They got that fiery guard, and they got the player of the year in the ACC, which ACC is down this year, but still. You still player of the year in the ACC. You can put that on your on your wall and hang that proudly, period. People are picking Loyal Chicago to win and then play Illinois in the second round. I'm not sure. I ain't gonna lie, some brackets I did pick them, some brackets I didn't. But I'm excited to see it either way. Um, another another one that people are talking about picking, Winthrop, 12 C versus 5 C Villanova. Because Villanova's missing their point guard. Um, he's out, which maybe that's the only reason why we even made the tournament, because we beat him by one point when he wasn't playing. But hey, we're here, so don't boom dog us. 
But I'm still going to pick Villanova to beat them. I think the pedigree and the coaching that they got. But you never know. They might be down on their luck. Depends. Here's one that I'm talking about a lot of people ain't talking about. A 14 versus a 3. Colgate versus Arkansas. Colgate's lost one game all year. And if you watch how they play, they got bigs. They got bigs and they defend. Arkansas is up and down. They got athletes or whatever. Never know when you got a bunch of athletes on a big stage. They might try to do one-on-one basketball. They might try to do showtime, whatever, whatever. Teams can win. You never know what can happen when they match up like that. Another one that people are talking about, Syracuse, 11 seed versus number six, San Diego State. I bet you Syracuse is going to wind up being the favorite in that game. That's how much people love Syracuse over them. You know what I say? Nope. San Diego State, who should have been a two seed last year, two seed last year, is is back. It's back. They didn't win as many games as last year or not. But, hey, they're back. And I think they could go to the next round after that, too. I would not be surprised at all. San Diego State. UCSB is playing Creighton. Creighton did not look good in their last game. Who they play? Georgetown Hoyas. And, um. Hey, but you know what? They're a three-point shoot team. And they shoot threes, and they shoot threes, and they shoot threes. And if they fall, they win. The only problem is, when they played a team like us, that was long and athletic and defensive-minded, they got stagnant. And guess what UCS, UCSB does? Same type things. They got bigs in the middle. They're long. They play defense. And I'm actually picking UCSB to win over Creek. That's my biggest upset. Um, so I'm just glad March Madness is here. I'm glad we're going to have fun with it. Um, I, I, I can't wait to see the rest of the games tonight and, and go forth after that. Um, my final four picks, here we go. Gonzaga, Baylor, Illinois. I'm not going to chalk because I want Texas Longhorns to win theirs. That's my final four. I'm picking the Zags and Baylor. They were the best two teams all year. All year long is Baylor and Gonzaga. And I'm picking Baylor. To cut down the nets. I'm picking Baylor to win. Rest in peace, Marvelous Marvel Hagler. Check me out on podcasts, all different aspects of podcasts. I'm on everywhere, Spotify, everything else. Um, tune in next time. Episode 30 coming up. Enjoy the NCAA tournament. And uh, like my junk, subscribe, and pass it on to everybody else so I can get more subscribers. Thank y'all. Appreciate it. Go Hoyas, baby.